This episode was requested by my patron, Naomi Norbez. So, basically, let's avoid stereotypical allegories. I'm looking at you, D&D orcs. And bright. Ugh. Spare Room with Karen Terry. Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about creating a supernatural roleplay group. Now, before we get into it, I want to clarify. I don't mean Supernatural the show. I mean Supernatural the genre. So these are role plays usually set in modern times, but where there are creatures such as vampires and werewolves and witches that exist and potentially walk among us. These role plays tend to be trendy. Sometimes they are super popular and sometimes not so much, but they are a genre that I really enjoy and keep coming back to. So when they are popular, why is that? I think when it comes to role play, supernatural role plays give you the opportunity to set your role play in the modern world. So like today's setting, today's time. So they're easy to understand in that way. And then you get to paint a nice coat of fantasy on top. And with supernatural role plays, it is all about the species. What if mermaids really existed or ghosts or demons? And what's great about supernatural role plays is they can be added on top of any other role play setting. You can have a supernatural town role play or a supernatural school role play or a supernatural warring factions role play. It can be anything, just add some supernatural on top. So what we're going to get into today is five things that I recommend to do or think about when it comes to painting that supernatural coat of varnish on top of your role play. Many supernatural novels or TV shows are mysteries, and that makes sense, right? If you've got these creatures walking among us, then why? What do they want? But running a mystery roleplay is hard as fuck. So if you think more than maybe a couple of your players are going to work to solve the mystery, I'm sorry to tell you, but they won't. And on top of players not putting in that initial effort, because it's a mystery, you as the admin will have to drop plot updates and clues and things like that, and your players are just unlikely to interact with them. This type of roleplay is a lot of work on your mods. So if you do want to do this, I recommend having a clear idea of the solution to the mystery before you even open the roleplay. Anyone that's tried to run a mystery roleplay knows exactly what I'm talking about and why players don't typically engage with us. Stuff is a whole nother topic that we can get into in a separate video, but suffice it to say, this roleplay setting is more work than other simpler types of roleplay settings. And chances are your roleplay is not going to go long enough to reach the conclusion anyway. So if you are going to do this, make sure that your roleplay is set up closer to a tabletop style than what we're typically doing in online narrative roleplays. You need somebody that is a game master that's controlling the NPCs and the environment to a higher degree than you would in typical online roleplays. But in general, my advice, obviously, as I've said now a few times, is don't set it up as a mystery. You're adding a lot of work to yourself that I just don't think in most cases is going to go appreciated. When choosing which species to add to your roleplays, sure, you need some of the standard ones that people expect, like vampires and werewolves and witches, but don't just add species because people will expect to see them. Instead, think about why people like to play mermaids or fairies or whatever it is, and make sure that the way that your species are set up, it exemplifies that element. So I'll give an example. When I was setting up my last role play as a supernatural role play, something that was missing was transmutation magic. None of the species had anything that was like a transmutation type of ability. So what I did is I looked at everything that I had and I tried to figure out where I could slot that in because that was something that I thought my players would get really creative with and have a lot of fun with. And what I settled on is when it came to pixies, I granted pixie dust transmutation powers. So when creating your species, instead of thinking about what a species typically is in other media, instead think about what elements you have, what elements you're missing, and where you can slot those missing elements into your various species. 
and make sure each and every supernatural species has something that players will be attracted to and interested in exploring. In addition to making sure each species has some kind of fun element, make sure your species are balanced. This is a little trickier because you have to take into account the urge for certain players to want to make the strongest character instead of the most interesting character. In my World Building for Role Players 101 video that I made, and I'll link that up in the card, I talk about taking into account min-maxers joining your roleplay and what that means for how you develop your lore. So I recommend going and watching that. That step is crucial for supernatural roleplays. But the short version of this for the purposes of this video is that typically what you'll have in a supernatural roleplay is a list of species that your players can pick from when creating their character. So what you'll need to do is take a look at that list of species and think to myself, I was trying to make the strongest possible character, how exactly would I go about that? And is that character game breaking? If it is, you have to figure out how to fix that. Maybe you add a weakness to that species, maybe you boost up the power of another species. It's all going to depend on your specific roleplay, and only you are going to know the exact answer to that. But it's something that you have to think about when it comes to supernatural roleplays. And for both this point and the last point, of course I recommend having your friends look at your lore book before you open the roleplay so that they can kind of poke holes in that lore and figure out these types of pieces. And I'll link that lore book video up in the card because in that one I talk about doing that review process in a lot more detail. All right, so we're going to take a little bit of a turn here. I think this is more common when it comes to fantasy species as opposed to supernatural species, but it happens here too. There is an urge to write about contemporary issues through the lens of your supernatural species. And that seems fine on the surface, right? Let's address bigotry through supernatural species. Cool. But the problem is a lot of world builders and writers and role players will do this, but they won't take the time to think about why bigotry exists the way it does in our current world and the different things that happened in our past to bring us to where we are with that now. And yes, bigotry is built out of the natural tribalism that exists within all of us as humans. It is part of our species. However, the way that we focus on things like race and sexuality as our points of bigotry in modern society has a reason and a history. We didn't have to group up around race and sexuality. We could have chosen something totally different, and then our world would still have bigotry, but in a completely different form than what we see today. Humans can tribe up over anything, and I think sometimes we forget that when we're writing. So when we try to write about bigotry in this particular way, we end up reproducing the results without reproducing all the steps that led up to those results, and we end up with a world that makes no sense at best and at worst is actively offensive. So I explain all this to say, my tip is to avoid stereotypical allegories. If you want a certain species to have issues with another certain species, instead, Think about the histories of those species. Don't be lazy and just make one species coded as a certain racial group and another species coded as another racial group. I'm looking at you, D&D orcs. And bright. Ugh. You'll also need to consider if humans should be player characters or strictly non-player characters. Personally, I'm not a fan of having human player characters for the same reason that I'm not a fan of having neutral characters allowed in a warring factions roleplay, which I talked about in that particular video. I think in a supernatural roleplay, humans tend to attract players that want to be a little bit too passive and not really engage with the plot of your roleplay. But this is only an average, your mileage may vary. If you are going to add humans, the question of balance becomes even more serious. Do you have people-eating species like vampires? And if so, why are humans not just lunch? What allows the vampires to live among them and not just see humans as cattle or pets? 
Depending on how you answer questions like that should determine whether you allow humans to be player characters or whether you say, no, they're only NPCs. And I made a whole video on NPCs, I will link that up in the card, which should help you also in determining if humans should be NPCs in your roleplay or if you should allow them as player characters. So these are my tips for supernatural roleplays. To recap, so these are my tips for supernatural roleplays. To recap, first, resist the urge to make it a mystery. Then, focus your species on fun elements people will be attracted to. Make sure your species are balanced. Avoid stereotypical allegories. And, of course, don't forget to answer the human question. So what do you guys think? Are these the things that you think about when you're creating a supernatural roleplay group? Or are there other things that you also think about? I would love to know all of it down below and let me know also if this helped you out with a group that you're creating. Thank you so much for watching and don't forget, of course, as always, to make it a great day.